What's up, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. I'm Jeremy. This is Andrew. And today we are going to talk about bragging about rank and the sometimes fine, sometimes not so fine line <laughs> between where it's appropriate and where it's not. If you're new to this show, if you want to check out all the things that we've got going on, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. See all the episodes we've ever done or go to whistlekick.com where you're going to see all the things that we do from our books to our training programs to the other projects, programs, people that are involved in this endeavor that we have here. What, what do we do? Why do we do it? We are here to support the traditional martial arts world industry. And the purpose of this show is to connect, educate, and entertain traditional martial artists throughout the world, no matter what you train, no matter where you are, what language you speak, because we have far more that connects us than divides us. And, and I feel very strongly about that. And to my knowledge, everybody involved in Whistlekick feels very strongly about that. That's why they're here. So let's talk about this thing. Let's do it. There are ways that you can help us, but we'll talk about those in the outro. If you go back in the history of martial arts radio, the probably the biggest theme is my frustration with ego and what ego does to martial arts. Mm. Ego destroys martial arts careers. It pushes people away. It creates rifts in friendship. Mm -hmm. And I tend to look at it as what if ego was not such a prominent aspect of martial arts training? Where would we be? How much further along in the development of martial arts in terms of human development, psychological development, personal development, would so many of us be if ego did not rear its head at seemingly every turn? Yeah. And it's been around for hundreds of years. We're not getting rid of ego. Yeah. Nope. I am, I'm nope. fully aware of that. But I'm going to work to make sure that personal growth via training via progress through the martial arts is connected to a reduction of unhealthy expression of ego. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way I can put it. Now, when we talk about, what do we title this? Stop bragging about rank. Yeah. Okay. When we talk about that, it could be very easy if you haven't listened to the rest of this. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if we have people who chime in without listening to this episode before they're, listening to the whole thing and they're going to say but jeremy there's nothing wrong with me putting stripes on my belt mm -hmm. or referring to my instructor by their title outside of training yep. or yep. or or right you're right there is nothing yeah. inherently wrong with that but like so many things there is nuance to it yeah and you can have a healthy way of dealing with it you can have an unhealthy way of dealing with it and so let's unpack where that line is. Because once we can find that line, we can create a rule and we can filter all this other stuff through it to see, am I bragging about rank or yeah. am I being proud or celebrating? Mm -hmm. Having pride in what you've accomplished. Because that is something that should be done. And in fact, in our society, we tend to not be proud of the things that we've done because so many people brag about what they've done and we don't want to be associated with that. We're afraid of how it'll come across. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Let's take an extreme example. Let's work from that. Okay. Um, because I think oftentimes those are the easiest ones to unpack and we can, we can draw something from. What is the most ridiculous example you could come up with of someone bragging about their rank? Yeah. So I would think someone who created their own style and immediately said, I'm a 10th degree black belt. Look at all the stripes on my belt. It's happened. Absolutely. We know examples of where it's happened. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go a step further. They legally changed their name. Oh my goodness. I hadn't even, that's, to their title. I had never even thought of that. that. Is, right. That's the most extreme example okay, I right. can come up with. You win. So <laughs> instead of being, you know, grandmaster, so in, you know, first name, last name, you are legally on your now license, grandmaster, first name, last name. Wow. Okay. And if someone addresses you, you insist on the, the use of that title. Okay. That's, that's about as extreme as I can. Yeah, I would agree. 
Now, why is that so extreme? Why is that so over the top? Because that very same person who achieved that rank, we would not have, most of us would not have an issue referring to them as grandmaster or grandmaster so-and-so in mm -hmm. the context of training. So why is that such a, why does that turn people off? Why is that such a negative expression of ego? Do you have a thought? Well, I mean, because let's say that person gets pulled over for speeding. The police officer is going to have to call them by grandmaster. <laughs> that that to, it would be absurd. They're not. It is absurd to that person, to the police officer. They're not a grandmaster because they're not training together. Right, and I, and that last sentence I think hits the nail on the head. It is. I think it's when your identity becomes equivalent to your training mm. if who i am if if my title in terms of training and instructing becomes equivalent with my identity outside of training that is where it has gone too far yeah if i call you sensei while we're training and then you insist on me calling you sensei outside of training that's too far yeah that's bragging about your rank that is you embodying your training in day-to-day -day life exactly it, it would be fine if you chose to call me sensei if you saw if you saw uh we were walking down the street and we passed each other and you go, oh good evening sensei You're like that that's fine but if you said oh you know hello andrew and i chastised you right that's that's where there would be yeah. an issue. It's a, it's a completely different mindset. I've called instructors by their title outside of training because it's uncomfortable for me to call them by their first name. I'm the same way. Because I've spent so much time calling them this or that rank title that it's weird. And I'm just trying to be respectful and kind. And, and it's easier for me to be respectful and kind using their title. Yep. But they would never have a problem with me calling them by their name. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where else does this show up? Where else does bragging about rank cross that line? I think one of the places that it does is in every example I come back to has to do with use of title, mm -hmm. has to do with use of title. Um, here's one that drives me nuts. And it can be on both sides of the line, depending on the usage, social media. Yeah, interesting. Okay. I see people who their first name in, let's say, Facebook is their title. Okay. Now, here's why I could see doing that in one of two ways. If your primary usage of social media is in a professional martial arts context, mm -hmm. and the people you are engaging with know you by your title and your last name, it makes more sense from a marketing perspective mm -hmm. to sure. be Sensei Adams mm -hmm. than Andrew, because people go, who's Andrew Adams? <laughs> Who is this person coming? People oh, say that all the time. Oh, <laughs> oh that's Sensei, yeah. right? That makes sense to me. But then let's go back to the extreme, name change, if your entire identity of who you are, what you do, your contributions to the world and your position in society is wrapped up in the singularity of your of rank your and rank. title, yep. that's where it's too far. Yeah, And that's where it needs to be walked back. I am incredibly cautious when I engage with people who have their title in their name. In yeah. fact, to me, that is generally a flag of one of a number of things. And I, I know I'm thinking of people right now that I think very highly of who do this. Mm -hmm. So there are exceptions. I am, I am not making a sweeping generalization here. Here's another extreme that I don't think we would see too often. Wearing a belt out and about. If mm -hmm. all you would wear is your uniform with your belt with all the stripes or your name yeah. down the edge or whatever, that would probably be too far. Yeah. And in fact, most schools have rules about that built in. Exactly. Unless you're Master Ken. Unless you're Master Ken. And uh, Master Ken plays by his own rules, and that's okay. That's fair. Okay. 
we got any other spots that we can unpack with this before I mean, I, we I, start coming up with some rules? No, I, I think those are the, that's the, the, the big thing, I think, is the title, requiring of title outside of the class. Sure. Okay. So when we look at that, then, we can look at it from two sides. The person who is bragging about rank and being over the top and everybody else, basically their students. Mm. If someone has to brag about their rank, I think we can draw some conclusions there. If all that person has is their rank and their insistence that people address them by that rank at you know baby showers and weddings <laughs> yep. and wherever else, and again, not that people choose to, but the insistence that they do. That yeah. is an important distinction. Yeah. That person missed a lot of the personal development opportunities that, bring, that come through martial arts. Yeah. And they probably need some growth time. They need to work on themselves. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's pretty clear. And I think most people would agree with that. I lost my train of thought. There it went. <laughs> I'm reeling back. I'm rolling back. I'm rolling back. Anyway, if someone's going to brag about rank, there we go. If someone's going to brag about rank, it says a lot about who they are. Yeah. Now, what about those around them? Because this, I think, is a more important thing to talk about. What do we tell the students? Well, I think the students are hearing that rank is most important above everything else especially from that instructor exactly exactly that is it is king um these are the schools where i find people are terrified to change school mm. because they have to start over and their identity starts to get wrapped up in rank yep yep i've known people who have trained somewhere let's say they they earn whatever rank you know could be a brown belt could be a second degree you know it's not not some you know, they're not an eighth don or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they, they've put in some time, they've achieved some things, they have some respect, and they go elsewhere, and they refuse to train anywhere where they have to start over. Yeah, lose rank. Because if they start over, their identity is wrapped up in that rank. Mm -hmm. And this is a problem. Yeah. Because I would rather someone continue training as a white belt somewhere else and something else and further their martial arts education then look for, and, and I get emails like this all the time. I've trained in this style, in this location, under this person. That school closed. I had to move, whatever. There's nowhere around me that, will, that I can just step in and do the same stuff at the same rank because it's too different. Okay. Yeah. My, I mean, I would just necessarily- Just train. I, I wouldn't phrase it this way, but my response would be, who cares? Right. It shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter. I think the important thing to remember is that when you train, you're training for your own reasons. And if your training satisfies those reasons, that's all that matters. So if you end up with an instructor, I've trained under people who fit this model. Mm -hmm. I respect their martial arts rank. I don't respect them as people. Yeah. I think they are terrible people, but wonderful instructors. It can happen. Oh, absolutely. I've, I've known several of them. Sure. I will happily train under them not long-term. I'm not going to take rank from them, mm -hmm. but they have things to share and I want to learn. Yep. There are plenty of other ways where expressing rank can be bragging, but it can also not be. So I'm being really careful about mm. some of these things. Uh, here's a great one that could be either way. A windbreaker with the school logo, name and title. Mm -hmm. Is that me respecting the title that I've earned? through that training in that organization, because it's got the logo, I'm probably gonna wear it to and from class, makes sense there. Or is it me wanting other people out in the world to see that windbreaker and know, and, and know that I'm a this, that, or the other, yeah. or inviting them to ask? Yeah. Forget about the fact that putting your rank or even a very direct, I train martial arts on outerwear when you're out in the world, carry some risk with it. Notice that very little of what whistle kick puts out for apparel says martial arts on it. Yeah, just whistle kick. There's a reason. But it could go in one of different one or two different directions. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, and it could be considered marketing. They're like, I'm marketing my school. Mm -hmm. Totally fine. So what's the rule that we have that I think this all distills down to? What is the reason? What is the why? Understanding the why is the most critical part. And if the why is healthy and or resonates with your why, if it makes sense to you, it's fine. If it doesn't, it's yep. not. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking of it. There are so many examples in my head right now that go <laughs> back to certain people or could be considered going back to certain people that I, that I respect, but I'm trying to be really cautious because I'm not trying to throw stones at anybody. Now let's take all that aside. Let's take a moment and bring it back to the top and connect all these dots. Mm -hmm. Why do I think this is important? Why should people stop bragging about their rank? Because it's not the most important thing. It's not what matters. Your personal growth as a martial artist is so much more important than any stripes on your belt or title or how many students in your school or how much money you made teaching private lessons or any of these things. It doesn't define me. It shouldn't define you. Yeah. And if it does define you, then you're missing out on opportunities to progress further and become a better person mm -hmm. and help educate and, and bring up the next generation of martial artists. I feel so strongly about this that the more time I spend thinking about it, talking about it, the more resistant I am to ever taking an, an additional title beyond sensei. It's the only one I ever wanted. Mm -hmm. It essentially means one who came before or yep. teacher, if you want to get even more simple. I'm good with that. Sure. I've had other people give me titles. Hmm. Never used them. Yeah, I don't have stripes on my belt. I've had the same belt for 26 years. Don't care. Yep. It's black, mostly. Kind of faded. Yeah. It's got some white edges. I'm the same person I am right now in these jeans and sweatshirt Absolutely. that I am when I'm wearing a gi or a dobok. Because it doesn't define who you are. Suit. Yep, absolutely. So if you watched this or listened to this and you are feeling a little uncomfortable at the things that we brought up, I'd encourage you to think about why. Why does this bother you? Now, the last thing, if you know anything about me, the last thing I've ever said on this show is that I am right. If you disagree with me, you are wrong. I have always said, I hope this makes you think. If it makes you think, if it makes you uncomfortable and that leads to some thought and some conversation with people that you care about or trust, great. That's awesome. Yeah. If you watch or listen to this and you disagree vehemently and you come away with it and say, you know what? Jeremy has actually more entrenched my beliefs because I've thought about it. Cool. I support that. Mm -hmm. I want you to believe what you believe because you believe it, not because you were told to believe it. Absolutely. Anything else? Ed? No, I think that's great. Okay. And let's call it here. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. If you want to support the work that we do at Whistlekick, you got lots of ways you can do it. Whistlekickprograms.com. Learn how to get stronger or faster or better conditioned. If you want to grab a book at Amazon, go to Amazon, search Whistlekick. You'll find plenty of books over there. We're rolling new ones out all the time. We've got a Patreon where you can get not only additional exclusive content you won't find anywhere else, but now free merch, stickers and shirts and stuff like that. And uh, we're not making you pay extra for that. This is something that we, we've been looking at doing and now we're doing it. Follow us on social media. We're at Whistlekick. Leave us a tip at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Guest suggestions, email me, jeremywhistlekick.com. We're talking. I think we'll call it there. Thank you, everyone. So until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great day. day.